Hello everybody. It's my pleasure to welcome everyone to this webinar on theme in WSO2 API Manager. I'm Chanaka Jaisen, a technical lead for WSO2 working with the API Manager product team. Along with me is Kasun Tenakon, an associate tech lead also from the API Manager team. Today we will be working you through this webinar and discussing theming and customizing techniques available with the new API Manager 3.0 release. Let's get started. When it comes to advertising the APIs to the developers, it requires rebranding the developer portal according to the corporate needs. In this webinar, we will be covering the methodologies that are built into new API Manager 3.0, allowing you to customize it according to different theme requirements. We will look into how we can do basic look and feel customization with the developer portal, as well as some of the advanced techniques to override and rewrite parts of the rather specific components of the dev portal. With the first part of this session, we will cover some of the common tasks when it comes to branding and customizing the developer portal. Changing the header background color, changing the logo, removing the footer or changing its background color, are some of the things that we will learn to do within this session. Also, we'll have a look at some of the functional changes that can be done, where the basic theme methods, such as adding a home page, making the listing view as the default view, for API listing, and so on. During the second part of this session, we will take a deep look into how this React application is structured and how we have developed the application. Also, we will see where to put customized code without getting them conflicted with the original code base. First, let's discuss the basic theme. I will give a brief introduction to the front-end technologies we are using. Single page application architecture is very popular and it's been around for quite some time now. So we will not go into detail on that. We have a single HTML page serve at the, at the initial page load and the rest of the page navigation will happen on the client side. Action, actions such as listing APIs, selecting an API, generating trees will not trigger a page load, but the experience for the user will be the same. React components are written in JavaScript ES6. ES6 is a nice improvement over the language, but older browsers cannot understand the new syntax. Getting ES6 to work in the older browsers, we need some kind of transformation. And that transformation is called transpiling. We use Webpack to build JavaScript files for users usage in browser, but Webpack doesn't know how to transform ES6 JavaScript to ES5. But it uses Babel to do this transpiling a concept called Webpack loaders. We will explore these concepts in more detail during this, the advanced customization section. But for the basic theming, we don't need to know any of those stuff. We are using React Material Design Library. Material Design is an Android-oriented orient, design language created by Google. React Material Design is a React component library that implements Google Material Design. It's the most popular and widely used React UI library on GitHub. The base of the theme, uh, React Material Design uses a single theme object throughout the application. We use this as the base of our theme. This JSON object is injected to the web application at the runtime. It's a JSON with key value pairs such as font family, primary color, logo URL, and so on. You can locate, locate the web application artifacts in uh, repository development server, Jaggery apps, uh, dev portal folder in API manager distribution. Uh, you can, uh, all you need to know before starting to theme dev, dev portal is to have basic knowledge about JSON. And some uh, little knowledge of CSS will also help. Uh, these are these are some of the things uh, that we can do uh, via the default theme js uh, we can enable or disable api detail tabs rating the home page 
tech cloud footer banner and many more in this demo we will look at some of the things we can do with the default thing so this is the default uh, listing page home uh, home page api listing page we have a, a grid view by default uh, from the default theme this we are going to change it to a list view uh, let's see let's open this uh, default theme this here uh, uh, we can see this uh, fr uh, page style attribute is set to fluid by default we can change it to list to change uh, the styling of uh, the api details tab uh, api listing page a default look to a listing way so once we refresh the page So once we refresh the page, we can we will be able to see the changes uh, from the browser. Now we can see the uh, list view here. Uh, it can be changed from here. Uh, so the next thing we are going to do is to change the uh, uh, page layout to a fixed view. By default, it's a fluid view, uh, meaning that the whole browser screen is taken from the web, uh, web page. So we are going to make it a fixed size huh? by changing the page style at width to fixed. As you can see, the uh, page size has been changed to a fixed size. Uh, uh, we can also change the background color of the page. Now it's by default, it's a, a, a dark color. We want to make it a light color. So you will be changing this color to a white color by giving the hex value of the color. And also we can add a uh, border to the page as well. Next thing we are going to do is to uh, change the logo to a different one. I have already uploaded the logo to this uh, images folder, uh, site public images folder, naming uh, the name of the logo is custom logo. As you can see, the, we can see the logo, but the size of the logos are different. So we have, we, we should be able to give the width and height of the logo. So we can change it from here as well. So the height of the logo is uh, one, 128 pixels. And I'm sorry, the height is uh, 34 pixels. When we refresh the page, we can see the changes in the dev portion. Uh, now I want to change the background color of the header. So I can do it from uh, the parameters here in the app bar section. 
So I'm changing the background color to an orange color. So this one, uh, this color we can uh, get from a graphical editor. We have changed the uh, header color to different. Next thing I'm going to do is to change the left menu. This left menu appears when we go into a API. Once we go inside the API and we give the details of the API, we can we are getting this left side menu. So we want to change this uh, left side menu to a horizontal bar. One. So that is pre-built and uh, we can configure it from here. So by default, it's vertically left alignment is the default one. We can change it to horizontal by changing here. By just doing that, we will be able to get a menu that uh, stays on the top. So the left side menu uh, icon looks a little bit odd. Uh, so I'm going to remove it from the configuration. So I'm setting this uh, root icon visible property to false. And it, uh, the icon is gone. So similarly, we can change the uh, left side menu to right side by changing putting uh, the property as this vertical right it should appear on the right side of the page I'm going to leave it as horizontal and Next thing I'm going to do is to uh, color this information section to a black color. one. As you can notice, this uh, text also is in black color, but the back, background is white color. Since background is white color, the text we can see. But if you change the background color to a black color, uh, the, if the text also in the black color, uh, we will not be able to see the uh, text. Let's see by just changing the background color to black. What will happen so this info bar section is uh, have the uh, relative parameter related parameters for that section so we are changing the background color to dark color so once we only change the background color now once we come here and refresh the page the text colors also have been changed uh, this is handled by the team uh, our theme system by default by uh, the, it get the contrasting color for the background and apply it to the text colors so there are a bunch of parameters there uh, as well uh, to set different uh, values on there we can play around on those stuff as, and see the uh, get different results <clears throat> next thing we are going to do is to uh, uh, put a landing page uh, usually put a uh, in order to put a landing page it need a lot of customization we need to uh, learn put link pages and configure the links uh, so, uh, it's, it requires a lot of time so we have by default we have put this uh, landing page but it's disabled by default uh, we can enable it by uh, putting the active into true here once we do that, uh, now there there is only two uh, links here: APIs and applications. When we refresh the page, it gives us a home page as well. When we click the home page, we have get we get, we get this default uh, home page with dummy text. This text also. We can configure that text from uh, the theme days, uh, default theme days, days file. Uh, you can see the text here. 
we can add these uh, slides and uh, we can configure the image, image locations, things like we can do. Uh, let's see if by cus uh, customizing this text here. So as you can see, we can change the text uh, where the default theme is. Uh, next thing we are going to do is to um, disable the tag cloud. Tag cloud we, will, we can uh, see when we go to the API listing page. It's this place on the left side. Uh, in order to di uh, disable the tag cloud, we can uh, set its value to false here, which will hide the tag clouds without display. Uh, as you can see, there are a bunch of parameters here to dis uh, change the look and feel of the tag cloud as well. And you can uh, play around with this stuff uh, to achieve different results. The next thing we are going to do is to, uh, we, can, we, are, we can disable different tabs in the API details page. As you can see, once you go to a API details page, uh, you can see there are uh, comments, tryout, and documentation. These links are there. We can uh, in the overview page also these uh, sections are by uh, given in here as boxes. So uh, what we are going to do is now uh, we will be disabling this comment section by setting its value to false. And uh, also this document section, we we'll hide it by setting its value to false. Once we refresh the page, this comment section and the document sections are gone. And also from this uh, overview section. Next thing, uh, uh, something that usually the developers want to put in the, their portal is to provide the banner on top of the, top of the page. Uh, we can enable this banner from here. Once you enable this, <clears throat> so you, uh, this this can be used to uh, dis display a important announcement. Uh, it also can be customized and themed uh, with these uh, parameters given here. You can set the background color, uh, the font color, etc. And also you can set the image image as the banner uh, by providing it from here. The last thing we are going to uh, demonstrate is to change the footer. So by default, the footer is the WSO2 default uh, copyright message. We'll be changing it to a different message from here. And we'll be changing the background to a very dark color. And we'll change the font color to white. As you can see, the, cus uh, the custom copyright message is displayed in here. So that's all for the demo demonstration.
Uh, next, we will be looking at how we theme for tenants. We can upload tenant specific themes via admin web application. A theme file consists of the default theme JSON file and images. Let's see that, that in action. The tenant theme can be uploaded from the admin application. Uh, let's go to the admin application. Uh, I have already created the tenant called wso2.com. I'm going to log in with that tenant uh, to the admin port. Once I logged in, I can go to these settings and upload theme, tenant theme section. I need to select this uh, theme from here. Uh, it's a zip file that I'm uploading. This zip file contains the theme dot, default theme.json file and this custom logo. Once I uploaded the tenant theme, I can, I'm going to this uh, tenant store. Uh, this is the custom theme that I have uploaded to the tenant. When I go to the super tenant, that same thing is there, uh, the theme is there uh, that we have changed uh, previously. So uh, these are the change. But if you revert back to the previous state of the theme, We were able to uh, drastically change the UI without uh, touching any CSS, JavaScript, or uh, any HTML code. Just look by going through this uh, JSON file, we are able to completely change the look and feel of the uh, developer portal. And there are a lot of uh, other parameters as well in this one uh, that we, we can use that uh, parameters to uh, provide a lot of uh, customization on the developer portal. But in order to, if we want to do something that is quite supported by default theme, we have to go with, go with advanced customization. Now, Kasun will take over and he will explain more detail on the uh, advanced customization section. Okay, uh, thank you, Chanaka. So, uh... As my colleague Chanaka explained that uh, we have looked into uh, how basic theming in API Manager Developer Portal works. And uh, now let me move on to see how WSO2 API Manager 3.0 facilitates the advanced customization in the Developer Portal web app. So as Chanaka has mentioned earlier, we are using Webpack module bundler for bundling the JavaScript file. So we have developed a Webpack loader to allow customization in the developer portal. What loader does is uh, basically in the building time, it checks for custom implementations in a predefined location, uh, which is the over, overrides directory. I will show that uh, the directory structure in a minute. And uh, while iterating through the files when building, uh, it iterates through the uh, JavaScript source files. And if the Webpack loader finds a matching source file in the overrides directory with the current file, which is the currently processing file in the uh, source, source directory structure, it will replace, replace the content of the original source file with the content of the custom implementation. So that's how this, uh, our custom loader works. So when we get the final JavaScript bundle, or once we complete the uh, compilation process or building process, it contains the original source code with overridden custom implementation. So basically, uh, once you get the get the final JavaScript bundle, you uh, it will contain your custom code as well as our original or the default code as well. So the app will be customized according to your need. So in this way, you can literally turn the developer portal upside down. Basically, you can completely change the application in the way you want to uh, see it. So let's move on and see how it works. 
So before going to the code, there are a few points that I would like to highlight here. First, it is very similar to subtheming concept that we had in API Manager 2 X versions. For example, in the previous subtheming method, you can override the default implementation by putting uh, the custom implement implementation sorry, in a parallel folder structure inside the subtheme directory. So similarly, in API Manager 3.0, you have to add your customizations in the override directory and build the developer portal app again. So note that previously you didn't have to build anything, but now you have to. So, uh, I think this uh, this build process has mentioned by Chanaka as well. So I'm not going to repeat it here. Anyway, that modern JavaScript ecosystem brings a lot of advantage to the code base now in the API Manager 3.0. You can experience some of them in the customizations that you build as well. So for example, uh, now it is possible to write tests for your UI extensions and custom implementation and your custom code will uh, validate against our ESLint ES -Lint rules that we have in, uh, have in place in uh, developer portal code. And uh, basically the customization limit is, is the uh, uh, REST API like data, data layer. So anything that you can fetch from uh, fetch and uh, pass through the REST API, you can build uh, your any customization on top of that. So this uh, whole stack make it easy to maintain your custom code and improve the code quality as well. Uh, because now you can even uh, implement test for your customizations and uh, like going in the long run, uh, you, you could uh, you could reliably like uh, depend on your custom code because you have now test in place. So, and the other point is unlike the basic customization uh, explained by Chanaka for the advanced customize, sorry, customizations, you need to have the source code uh, of the developer portal and you need to install the Node.js and NPM tool as well. Uh, we normally use NVM, which is a tool to manage Node.js versions to install Node.js in our workstation. You may use it or you can try something, some other methods to install the uh, Node and uh, NPM tools. So, uh, any, anyway, you have to make sure that you install Node version 8.12.0 or above and NPM 5.7.0 or above because uh, for example in npm in uh, we use uh, npm ci command to build the um, react application so that ci command comes after npm 5.7.0 so you need to make sure that these minimum versions are met when you are uh, installing these uh, tools okay so Let's see how this works. So there are two essential parts in this uh, advanced customization uh, method. Uh, so in the left, you can uh, left side you can see the uh, directory structure that we have introduced for overriding the default information implementation. And on the right hand side, you can see the uh, webpack configuration that that is uh, relevant to this uh, this uh, custom custom webpack load. So first let's. Yeah, sorry. So let's go to the demonstration part. That uh, first, I will demonstrate how to write custom component to override the default uh, 404 page, which is page not found page for APIs. And then I will uh, go through and show you how to customize the application listing page, the default behavior. Uh, using some of the components that are coming with the default app and show you how you could make it a card view. Now, in the default view is a tabular view where you uh, see the uh, like list of applications in table format and you could make it look like the API listing page uh, in the card format. So, let's move to the code and uh, now we go to API details page and let me enter some uh, invalid API UUID. So 
now here this is our default page not found page and we are like showing some uh, giving some uh, options to choose to the user that you can go to api listing page go or applications page and let suppose that someone want to change this uh, 404 page to some custom page so with the uh, with the basic uh, basic basic customization level you cannot actually do that um, like completely replacing an existing component with some another one but you have to go to the advanced level advanced customization level so i will keep this page at it is and uh, open a new page so then we can later compare how this uh, customization uh, like effected and let's close this one okay now this is the uh, like source source code of the developer portal uh, web app so now we have provided this override directory and uh, this is the source directory which contains the original source code of the app now suppose if you want to override the uh, default 404 page first you have to locate the page in the original source like um, since i know the path i could directly go there but like this is the page that is rendering that 404 for view so if you don't know the path you could use the uh, react dev tool and uh, there they have this component explorer and you could locate you could use this explorer tool and then uh, locate the component so what is the component that is uh, related to this this view so go to components and select this one um, so let me dock it in the bottom okay now it is easy so here yeah, and then uh, you can locate the component from here so like that you can locate any component that you want to that you like to like customize or change and then uh, locate the file location like uh, no, notice the file location and then uh, you need to create exactly same directory structure or relative path from the override folder as it is appear in the source for like in, inside the so source directory now for example this resource not found page is located in uh, source and then src and then app components base error and there we found this page not found jsx so i have to create the same like directory structure inside the override directory so i have already done done that beforehand so i just put a trailing underscore here to uh, like uh, change the name to prevent it uh, overriding the default one to show you the default behavior to default ui and uh, i have created already created this file so let me rename it to to make it the overriding thing happen so now we have cre created the resource not found JSX file in the exact same uh, directory pattern that we found in the original source. And then uh, you can build the app. So I have in here, I have used the npm run build dev command. So build dev is an alias to uh, the Webpack development build. So let me build the app now so meanwhile I, I will show you another another point that you have to take when uh, when important importing you are like uh, importing uh, js files from uh, relative parts or relative to the your custom component or overriding component you have to use this app override or app override prefix so i will explain it in a minute now let's go to the the page again and uh, if i refresh the page now so okay now you can see that now that uh, default view is completely changed now you see this error 404 message and a different message and this is what we had before so this is the default implementation or default view and now this is the custom custom view 
so now uh, get back to where we were okay so if you want to import some relative javascript file in your custom component like this is this is the custom component it is inside the override directory so you have to use this app override special alias so i have created this utils js for just for the demonstration part so i i have implemented this class named utils and put this static method name get name so if you want to consume such uh, like class implementation or method or whatever you have you can put it in anywhere inside this override directory like you can build your own directory structure for keeping the utils and constant and like that but you have to make sure that this app override is used uh, and then you have to give the relative path from this override directory to your whatever the files you need to import so then this will be picked up correctly and uh, you will get the, this util implementation at your uh, custom code so otherwise if you like didn't put this part it will make some uh, errors in the build time send uh, the or the builder can't locate this uh, js file so that's the first like uh, basic customization uh, in the uh, this override override mechanism and now i will show you how we can customize the uh, like a little bit more advanced customization use some of our existing react component so for that uh, i will log into the developer portal and go to the application listing page so unlike in the aps listing page we we haven't provide a way to like switch between views like for example in apis you can switch to list view and grid view like that but in uh, application listing page you don't have such option so if an user want to implement a grid view to here then again you can't do that with that uh, default theme js file and uh, you could uh, go 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 in the path in this advanced customization method so in so i will show you how to do that as well now it's similar it's same as before like you have to create a same folder structure and you have to give the same name as it is as it appears in the original source so for in this example uh, we are trying to override this uh, listing of jsx file in component application and listing inside the listing directory so i will go to there here this listing and this file so this is the original implementation and now we want to change it to like uh, show the list of apis in card mode or in, in a different completely different mode so what i have done here is i i haven't like tried it from the scratch but rather i have used some of the existing component that are coming with the default uh, source so for example this custom icon this loading icon this application data like data layer implementation and this some of the react context and these things are already coming in the default pack so or the default source so you can use or you can reuse these component as well when you are doing the customization so that's what i'm going to demonstrate here so uh, just like before i have created this file and the content and i just rename it to uh, prevent overriding the default p for the for the moment and now i have uh, rename it back to listing jsx and i will rerun the build so now uh, what i'm going to, what i want to highlight here is you can uh, use the use the existing or the the components that are coming uh, that are developed by the wso2 community in your customizations as well and one thing you have to like uh, notice you have to use these app components and app data alias when aliases when you are using those existing component otherwise again similar to the previous case you will get some uh, import resolution errors when you are building the application so now the app has been successfully then let's 
I will keep this window as it is and open a new one. And now you can see that it has completely changed to a different view. So now you can see the application in, 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 in the one application is shown as one card and uh, you can click on it and go to the application detail and you can click on the edit button and it will navigate to the edit view like that. Now previously it, 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 uh, it had only uh, the table view and now we have card view. So and when, when I'm implementing this customization, I, I haven't like like tried the code from the scratch, rather I have used the already existing uh, component from the uh, WSO2 uh, original source. So those are the those are the things that I want to cover in this advanced customization uh, demo. So yes, so let's move on and uh, yeah, things that you want to remember is always match the relative parts in override directory with the original source directory. Like if you want to override some component or if you want to override some files, then you have to create the exact directory structure inside the override directory. And then you have to give the exact name to the file that you want to override in the override directory. Like now at the end, if we check the, if we compare this override directory or the, the structure of the override directory and the source directory you can see that this listing this file and the uh, base error page not found file the relative parts from the source directory and override directory are same so just make sure that the directory relative parts are same and then also you need to Consider the app override alias using the app override alias whenever you use relative imports in your custom component. For example, in here. So since this is something not they are not available in the original source code, so you have to use this app override alias or prefix whenever you import such uh, relative files. And also you could always use the dependencies that we have that we have uh, specified in our package JSON file. So you are free to import anything that we have already like defined in the package JSON, like in here and uh, in the listing page also. Uh, it's, you can uh, use any dependencies in the package JSON. And uh, then again, the other point is you use a pack alias for default components. That means uh, if you are using, if you want to consume any component that is there in the original source, for example, this loading component, this application data layer or the settings con context, whatever the thing you want to import from the original source, you need to use these aliases. So let me show you where we have defined these aliases. So this app data is mapping to the source src app data this directory and app components is mapping to source app components so basically you can use any components under this components directory in your customization and like any of these and you can use any of these data layer files uh, also in your customization by using the app data prefix and app component prefix so yeah, so that's we have for today in our webinar in uh, we define the beautiful webinar. So, so if you have any questions, yeah, you may ask them now. Uh, we got one question. Uh, can we use whole Jagger sub themes as in the new API manager 300 web app? Yeah, so the old jaggery sub themes are written in uh, jaggery uh, jaggery code basically it's a different language and it's a subset of javascript but it's not 100 percent compatible with the react components or, it, or rather the the state the quick answer is no you can't you can't use the old jaggery sub themes in the api manager 30 react apps uh, you have to rewrite the uh, customization in uh, 
in React code. Yeah. Yes, you can uh, try with the default changes uh, and see if that uh, changes can be done from there. And if that is not possible, you can you have to go with the uh, advanced customizations. Uh, we we have another question. Uh, the question is: Are you using Redux library to manage state? Yes, we. At the moment, we don't use Redux. Uh, we uh, completely depend on the uh, like um, the context API, and uh, we have uh, most of the recent code we have used the React hooks. So with hooks and the context API, um, I think uh, we have we we could survive uh, with those two APIs at the moment, and uh, we haven't think of integrating Redux library uh, at the moment. So yeah. we don't use that basically. We don't use Redux. Uh, we got another question. Uh, any problems using PNG or JPG for logo instead of SVG? Uh, there's no problem. Uh, anything that is supported by browsers, IMG tag, can be used in here. So PNG, JPG, uh, CG all is fine. Uh, we have another question. Uh, in in the demo, you showed how to update the static text. Could could you elaborate a bit more on how refer how referring to dynamic text or value? Uh, in the default changes, we only have static values. Uh, all the dynamic uh, values actually coming from the uh, store API, REST API. Uh, that uh, that part is uh, only the REST API we are calling and getting the dynamic values. Uh, other theme related uh, text is actually uh, static. I think that's all the questions we have for today. So. Mm -hmm. So I think we can wrap up our session for today. Uh, the beautifying, the beautiful API Manager three zero. How to customize the web app, uh, mainly the Geo portal. So you can try try out our API Manager three zero release uh, server from uh, by downloading it from this link, and then you can join our Slack channel from this link, and you can explore the code base from github in product apim and then you can if you find any issues you can uh, report them uh, from the product apim before in the github in the issues uh, section so um, thank you for joining us yes and uh, there is an upcoming uh, webinars on this this december 12th about building a ci cd pipeline for api and we would like to invite you to register for this webinar and uh, join to this webinar as well. So thank you for joining us today and uh, have a nice day. Have a nice day. Thank you for joining us.